the oxidization process, like I said, how do we stop it? We put it into a dryer and we dry tea at 200 degrees Celsius. And you want to get an even dry. So you feed your tea in through here and there's a conveyor belt. It takes it down and you want to have a flat, you want to have your tea flat on the conveyor belt. You don't want it mounted up like mountains. You want it flat. It'll go down to the dryer and it'll stop the oxidization process. And at the other end, you'll have your made black tea that everyone can identify with. And that essentially is the tea making process. From this, you'll have different grades of tea. How many of you guys have heard, have you guys ever heard of this thing where, where they say, the larger the leaf, the better the tea? Mm. Have you heard of that? Large leaf tea is good, mm. yeah? It's like saying, it's literally the same as me, me saying this to you. We have a delivery company. We're delivering parcels in the middle of central London during the day. Here's a 40 foot lorry. This is what you're gonna deliver parcels in, you know? A 40 foot lorry is great for going up the M6 if you've got, I don't know, a couple ton worth of cargo to take up. It's hardly the vehicle of choice if you're delivering small letters and parcels through central London. You want to use something more like a, more like a scooter, you know, to get through the traffic. And this is exactly the same thing. You can make good large leaf tea, and at the same time you can make bad large leaf tea on the other end of the scale, you can make good small leaf grades of tea, and you can make bad small leaf grades of tea. The, the size of the grade of tea really depends on what kind of cup you want to have. So if you want to have a strong cup of tea that you can add a bit of milk to that you want to have in the morning, that, uh, that will you know, wake you up, you want to go for a smaller leaf grade of tea. If you want something for the afternoon that you want to have, you know, maybe you want to pair it with uh, you know, some sandwiches, maybe some sweet treats, something lighter, something that doesn't have you know, such a thick body, it doesn't have a lot, uh, a, a lot of a kick, you want to go for a larger leaf tea. So I'll give you guys an example. When I was on plantations, it was, I think it was a, it was a Wednesday and I wanted to go to the club and I had, and I had uh, the plucking rounds of, of who had plucked what and I walked up to the senior planter and I was about to hand him this book and he was having a, a talk with, with, with one of these young men who'd been elected by, by, his, um, by his planting area as, as one of the representatives for the workers. He was a young guy and I think he you know, sort of had like a point to prove. And I went to hand the book and he was like, this will be good training for you. You deal with this. And my Tamil at the time wasn't, uh, wasn't, it wasn't as good and I tried to understand him and he was you know, speaking to me and I said, okay, so let me get this straight. You don't like the tea that you're being given by the estate. You want to be given the export grades of tea that we export to, to, you know, to the foreign markets. And if you don't, if we don't, you know, give you the export grades of tea, you're going to do, you're thinking about doing a strike on the division. I was like, okay, interesting. So I thought, okay, fine. In the morning, after we make tea tonight, we always taste tea. Come see me in the factory tomorrow morning. And then we'll try and we'll try and hash this out. You know, we'll have a cup of tea, and we'll and we'll hash out your problem. So he goes. I'm sweating bullets if I'm being honest. I'm like Jesus Christ. You know, I'm like the new kid on the plantation. What if I cause a plantation strike? You know, I could even get fired for this. So I'm sweating the whole night. The morning comes, and um, he comes into the factory, and we have tasting cups like this. And I'll show you those ones up there as well. We've got the tasting cups laid out of what we made the day before, what we've made today, so that we can see you know, that there's no variance in quality. And he walks in and I said, okay, fine. You wanted to have BOP tea. BOP stands for broken orange peco, which is a, a grade that we export. And you don't want to drink the dust one that you're already getting. And I said, okay, fine. Here's a BOP tea that we made last night. And here's a dust one that we've made last night. You taste, I'm not gonna tell you which one is which, you taste, you taste the tea that you like, and then if you like it, we'll, 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 we'll come to an agreement here, you know, to, to, to give all these workers tea. And he tastes it and says, yeah, this is the one, sir. It's this one here. This is, this, is, this, is, this is the one that everyone's gonna like. This is the one I like. And do you know what I said to him? I said, good, that's the one you're already getting. That's dust one, right? So let's all get back to work. You know why he doesn't like BOP? Because BOP, the leaf grade, is a little larger, so you, the cup isn't as strong. And in Sri Lanka, people like to have very strong liquoring teas. Like, it's, it's, it's really thick, you know? You need to add a bit of milk, not a bit of milk, you need to add a lot of milk. So this concept of small leaf tea or dust tea or Fanning's tea is bad, it's, it's not, you know? 
It's, it's the Fannings that you're getting is bad. It's not that Fannings as a grade is bad, you know? It's, uh, it's the Fannings you're getting is bad, or the dust you're getting is bad. Fannings, Fannings yes, it's, um, it's the grade above dust. So when, you, when we grade T, the smallest grade that you can get is called dust. Uh, above that, you have broken orange peco Fannings, which is a grade slightly sm uh, larger. Above that, you have broken orange peco, and then you go, and that's pretty much all your broken grades, and then you go into your flowery grades, so you'll get T's like flowery broken orange peco, uh, which, which is FBOP. So I can actually show you guys here if I pass this around. In fact, I'll brew up some teas. Do you guys want to taste some teas now? Are you sick of hearing me talk? What gives the tea a smoky flavor? You know when you get the smoky flavor? Yep, two things will give that. If it's, if it's real Lapsang uh, Souchong, mm -hmm. what will happen is you, when we, when we dry tea, they will dry the tea over a smoke fire. Oh. And Traditionally in China, when they make tea, they, uh, they smoke this over pine wood. Um, however, in Sri Lanka, we, because we produce 90% of the world's cinnamon, we smoke ours, so the one that we have in the resort is smoked over cinnamon wood, so it has much more of a, a spicy finish to it. Uh, the other reason why you could get a smoky note in your tea could be two reasons. Number one, they've over-fired the tea. If you haven't set the temperature on, on, on the dryer well, you'll get a burnt note coming through in your tea, and we see that a lot in the tea industry. We see a lot of burnt notes coming through because some guy hasn't got the temperature right. The other reason it could be is if I take this tea here, this new Vithana Kamba tea, and if I go out with Nadine to have a cigar upstairs, you know, in the bar, and if we were to leave this, 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 this tin of tea with the lid open, Exactly. Tea is hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture. It absorbs flavors that are in the room. So when we sell, well, when we supply our tea to the resort, we pack everything into foil pouches, and then they put all their teas into a tin, and they cover up the foil pouch to keep the freshness in this leaf. When you guys buy tea in the supermarket, it's just a cardboard box in your tea bags. There's no, nothing is airtight. So any smells that it's picked up in the supply chain could also give it a slight smoky note. So if it's, been on a, if it's been on a lorry and someone's been having a fag break at the back, that can also affect your tea. In fact, like in, in, in the factory, if you smoke anywhere near the factory, anywhere near a factory within like a 25, 30 mile, uh, meter radius, you will get fired. It is a guaranteed thing to get fired in a tea factory for, for smoking anywhere near it. And that's why if, if when factories come, to, come, come towards renovation, when they paint, they will shut the entire factory down. They won't bring tea anywhere near, near the place for about two weeks. They'll paint it, they'll leave it open, they'll get the smell out, and then you'll start manufacturing tea because that'll have an, eff that'll have an effect on your final product. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that could be why you have that smokiness. But let me show you guys this. This is known as FBOP, which is flowery broken orange peco. This one here is known as BOP, which is from Murray Estate. Much, much smaller, much smaller. And see, when you're manufacturing tea at a higher elevation, now that tea's grown at 5,000 feet, mm -hmm. to be able to get the flavor to have a good breakfast tea, you've got to apply a lot of pressure. That's why you, that's why you roll for seven minutes. Mm -hmm. You roll for seven minutes and take three minutes off. And by doing that, you crush the leaf and you extract a lot more flavor out of the leaf. Mm -hmm. And then this one is grown at 6,000 feet. It's, have a smell of that as well. Notice the difference. It's grown at 6,000 feet above elevation. And that's known as peco. In terms of organic plantations, I'm not, in terms of my taste profile, I don't tend to like them as much because although there is a lot of marketing on, on organic tea, one thing I've found is that it's a case of what they, they use some pesticides, but they're not allowed to use others, you know? And when it comes to the final taste in the cup, I haven't found any nice organic teas um, that I think, are that I personally think are good, you know? They don't, they're not, they're not bringing out the real flavor. They're very bland. And the thing is, I think, I think what's more important is not, is not growing organic tea, but growing tea biodynamically, you know? So for example, going back to pests and diseases that you guys talked about, there is a pest on a tea plantation known as um, tea tortrix. And it's a small worm-like thing that gathers in the bud of the, that gathers in the, in the bud of the bush. 
Now, there's two ways you can get rid of this. You can pesticide spray, and you can kill this animal. Or you can quite simply, when you plant your tea bushes, you can plant other trees and let them grow. Plant, you know, in every 10 tea bushes, if you let one bush grow to 10 meters in height, birds will, will, will make a home in that, in, in that tea bush. They will then eat that tea tortrix that grows in the other bushes. You don't need to use pesticides to, to, to grow tea, you know? It was all there in the beginning, how, how, you know, how nature intended it. If you just let one in every tea bush grow up to 10 meters, birds inhabit it. Every time you get tea tortrix, the birds will go and eat it. And they will do a much better job than any of you or I can do trying to find and, and kill off tea tortrix on a, on a tea plantation. Effectively, yes. Say organic? organic plantations, what they will end up doing is, see, they, they, will use, they, will, they will use a pesticide for tea tortrix, but then they'll, they'll make their own manure for fertilizer. So it's, we're doing this, but we're not doing that, you know? So, which is, which, which, which I think is the, I think it's, it's, it's become almost more of a, more of a marketing kind of thing. It sells by saying, oh, look, it's, it's, it's organic, but, it's not really. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. You know, and it really comes down to, in fact, I think I'll do this here. It really comes down to what the consumer is being told. I mean, like, one, one other thing I think is fair trade tea. A lot of people, you know, consumers buy with, you know, with a, with a genuine good heart. But if you see how fair trade tea certainly affects plantations, like in Sri Lanka, for example, they get loaded with a lo with with a massive amount of uh, with a massive amount of paperwork that some poor chap like like the chief clerk has to fill out at the detriment of having to fill out pay slips at the detriment of having to look after uh, it, its worker force and then when you look at where the actual profits of fair trade go to fair trade plantations will get you know two cents more or a small degree more on on the plantation but when it comes to selling it they're selling their product for 20, 30p more. And that isn't going back into fair trade. That's going back, in, back into the company. So I've seen a lot of plantations that have gone fair trade and have come out of fair trade. And simply because the, the paperwork doesn't balance the actual, the actual uh, returns to it. Let me send you guys out some tea.